What's up guys, welcome back. New Year's Eve is on the way and I know you guys need something special for the dinner table. So today I'm gonna show you how to make Gordon Ramsay's herb crusted rack of lamb. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right guys, meet me in the kitchen, let's make it happen. First things first, we need to get all of our prep work out of the way and we're getting this party started with some roasted garlic. I know you guys might have seen me do this before but we're gonna show you one more time because it's so delicious, it really elevates the flavor on a lot of your dishes. We're gonna go ahead and cut the end off of the garlic and peel it a little bit. We're gonna preheat our oven to 400 degrees, lay that head of garlic onto some aluminum foil, add some olive oil and some seasoning, a little salt and pepper or my AP seasoning works great. Wrap it up nice and tight and pop that in a 400 degree oven for about 40 minutes. If you like roasted garlic like me, you can do this in bulk and keep some roasted garlic in the fridge to elevate a lot of your recipes during the week. As a reminder guys, all the specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below, so don't forget to check that out. All right, so now that our garlic is roasting away in the oven, it's time to prep our garlic and herb crust for this rack of lamb. And for that crust, we're gonna need some fresh parsley that we're gonna chop up nice and fine. We have some breadcrumbs here. We have some fresh Parmesan cheese, some rosemary, some lemon. We're just gonna use the lemon zest from this. We're also gonna need some olive oil that we didn't show you on camera. Go ahead and give your parsley a nice rough chop. You're gonna need about a half cup or so of that. We're gonna add all of this to a food processor or a blender, so don't really worry too much about how fine you chop it up. For the rosemary, you just wanna remove the leaves. We're not gonna eat the stem part, so go ahead and remove the leaves from the rosemary stem. And we're gonna chop that up as well and add that to the party. Rosemary goes really well with beef and lamb. I love the flavor that it adds, so definitely give that a try. Don't leave that out. The parsley is gonna add some color and a little bit of fresh herb flavor as well. We're gonna add all of this to our neutral bullet, but you can use a food processor or a blender for this as well. There goes the breadcrumbs. Here comes the lemon zest. In my opinion, lemon pairs beautifully with lamb as well, so I really like to add the lemon zest here. Obviously, I'm making some tweaks to Gordon Ramsay's recipe. Hopefully, he doesn't get mad at me. Or hopefully, he does and shouts me out on Instagram. That'd be awesome. All right, so now we're going in with the roasted garlic. That's going to kick the flavor up to new heights. There's that olive oil we talked about. And again, guys, all the specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below, so don't forget to check that out. But this is what we're looking like. This is going to be our crust here. As you can see, it's a nice coarse ground crumble. We're going to break out the whisk to break up any large pieces. Oh man, it's gonna add tons of flavor. Nice bright green color. I'm gonna add a little bit of my hot AP seasoning just to kick up the heat a little bit. If you don't have this, guys, you can use a little cayenne or red pepper flakes. I'm also going in with a pinch or two of salt. You wanna taste this as you go and adjust the flavor to your preference. Tons of freshness going on here, and now it's time to prep our rack of lamb. I grabbed this rack of lamb from Wegmans, but you can find them at Costco pretty often as well. They're not the cheapest cut of meat in the butcher, and everything's a little overpriced right now, so I totally get it. But this is where you get your lamb chops from. I like to save something like this for a special occasion like Christmas or New Year's Eve. I'm gonna cut this in half so each serving gets four bones. Unfortunately, our butcher didn't do us any favors in trimming this bad boy up, so we're gonna have to trim some of this fat. But other than that, these lamb chops look beautiful. So what we're gonna do is trim just a little bit of the fat off the fat cap. Some of that's not gonna render, so you wanna make sure that it's a nice thin fat cap, about a quarter inch thick or so. Just use a nice sharp knife like you see right here. Just protect your hands, make sure you don't cut yourself. This is easier to do when the meat is ice cold, so don't let it sit out for too long if you're gonna trim any fat. The colder the meat is, the easier the fat is to trim. There we go, nice and simple guys, nothing crazy. Most of the time your butcher will do this for you. I don't know if they were in a rush or what, but uh, we had to do some trim work here. No big deal though, we made it happen, no pun intended. Now we're gonna go ahead and score that fat cap, which basically means making a checkered board design on the fat cap that's gonna ensure that more seasoning penetrates the meat and it helps the fat render when we sear it. Now I hope you guys are up for some of these more difficult technique recipes. This one's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but I promise it's not as hard as it looks either. There's a couple steps to this process. We need to get it seasoned, get it scored, sear it, and then we're gonna coat it in Dijon mustard and then add that crust to it and pop it in the oven to finish. So really it's not that difficult guys, I promise. But let's get back to seasoning the lamb. I'm going down with some kosher salt, a nice adequate coating of salt because this is a large piece of meat and my all purpose seasoning is low sodium. So I like to add a little additional salt to the mix just to make sure that it's adequately flavored. So once we do that base layer of salt, I'm going down with my all purpose seasoning or a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. You can add whatever other flavors you want to the mix here. Whatever you like on your lamb is okay. 
Just make sure that you season it adequately and evenly. That's the goal right now. And then it's important to let this sit out for about 15 to 20 minutes at room temperature. You never want to cook an ice cold piece of meat because it's not going to cook evenly. So allowing it to come up to room temperature a little bit is going to absorb all of those seasonings that we added and help the meat cook more evenly. It's the minor details like that that take a good meal and turn it into a great one. So now we're going to go ahead and get our cast iron skillet nice and hot. We're going to add some avocado oil because it has a high smoke point. Then we're going to lay our meat into the skillet fat side down. Always lay the meat away from you. That way it doesn't splatter up on your forearm and burn yourself. You want to press down firmly for maximum surface area contact. Right now we're looking for that fat to render a little bit and get a nice sear just like that. We're going to sear it on all sides. Your house is going to be smelling absolutely amazing. That fat is going to start to render. Oh man, beautiful golden brown color. That's exactly what you want to see. My wife's favorite food is lamb, so I end up cooking this more often than I probably would otherwise. I'm more of a steak guy myself, but I do enjoy lamb as well. Not quite as much as her, but that's a story for another day. Happy wife, happy life, right? So we're gonna go ahead and remove our seared to perfection lamb to a wire rack like you see right here. And then we're gonna brush it with a thin layer of that Dijon mustard. The Dijon mustard is gonna add some beautiful flavor to the party and it's gonna help that crust stick to the lamb. And that's what's coming up next. So we're gonna go ahead and add that crumble or crust that we made with the garlic, the herbs, the lemon zest, all that good stuff. Tons of flavor in here. And we're gonna add that to the lamb. That Dijon mustard is gonna help everything stick beautifully. You don't necessarily have to pat it on there. You just sprinkle it and it should stick nicely like you see right here. We're gonna add that to a wire rack and then pop that in a 400 degree oven until it reaches your desired internal temperature. For me, that's somewhere between medium and medium rare, but I've listed all of the measurements in the description box for you guys to make sure that you don't over or undercook your lamb. And now we're gonna make a nice honey balsamic reduction as a sauce for this. So what you need to do is add one cup of good quality balsamic vinegar to a medium heat skillet. Reduce that down for about five to 10 minutes until it starts to thicken up. Once it thickens up, we're gonna add about three tablespoons of honey, more or less depending on your preference. We're gonna mix that in and you have a delicious sauce. This pairs beautifully with lamb, super easy to make. You can add this to steak, Brussels sprouts, salads, a number of different things as well. Once your lamb is done, you want it to rest for at least 10 minutes before you slice into it. That way the juices can redistribute. You don't want any dry lamb. This is perfectly cooked for me. I like mine in between medium and medium rare, but if you're more of a well done person, then I'm sorry to hear that, but you can cook the lamb a little bit longer. We did a nice little design with that sauce because why the hell not? Brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Say it with me guys, looking good. Going in for the taste test, let's see what we got. And that my friends is certainly a fork drop recipe. Happy New Year's to each and every one of you. Wish you nothing but the best heading into the new year. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.